Eh. It's all right. But I've just. <clears throat> this was me. If you're just <sighs> trying. It was March 2022 when I first created this YouTube channel and uploaded my first video. And I've made my goal pretty clear throughout. My goal is just to make 50 videos and then see where I'm at at the end of it and then sort of reevaluate from there. So 1,000 subscribers and 100,000 views later, here I am. So it's time to unpack my YouTube journey and see what's next. Come on. Right, that's enough. Yeah, I don't think I have the copyright for that, so. I'm not sure how much that will make it in the video, but never mind. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is James, for those of you that don't know me. So this is it, my goal hitting 50th video. Those of you that followed along know that my literally my only goal with my YouTube channel was to make 50 videos. So I did it. The question you might have is, why did I set this goal as my only goal and not, you know, say a certain number of subscribers or views or even to get monetized? Well, the answer to that is really control. I can't control any of those things, views, subscribers, certainly not monetization. And if I did set a sort of numerical goal like that, I'd probably just end up feeling very disappointed at the end and I'd probably end up stopping a lot sooner. So instead, I took some advice from my YouTube guru, Ali Abdul, and set a goal that I could control, which was the number of videos and the regularity. Now, truth be told, I didn't massively focus as much on the regularity, but more the number of videos. So I started on March 25th, that was the first upload, and that was about 60 weeks ago. And so if you do the calculation, that's roughly 1.2 weeks per video. So I made a video about 1.2 weeks, which I'm, I'm pretty happy with, to be honest. So I've grown a lot in these last 60 weeks in experience, and obviously in the skill of making videos. So I just want to take you through my YouTube journey now and I'm going to talk to you about the main things that I learned, which of which there are quite a few. I'm also going to take you through some of the things I found quite difficult about YouTube, maybe what I didn't expect. And then finally, I'm going to talk to you about what I think are the next steps for me um, in the next couple of weeks. So let's get started with what I learned. This might be a bad idea, but I've kind of just written down a list of the things that I've learned on my laptop and not written a specific script around it. I'm just going to sort of talk from what things come up from my brain. So this could take a while, but also I think it'd be quite interesting and it'll actually be my honest sort of uh, opinion. So firstly, videos take a long time to make. Uh, I think I didn't really fully ex expect this, but um, they do take a while. And I think I forgot about the fact that there's so much prep work that goes into making a video, such as, you know, all your scripting, uh, thinking about what shots you need, actually getting the experience of the thing that you're gonna be talking about, you know, doing good research. I just didn't expect it to take so long, the whole process. I did actually mention this, I think, in my halfway to my goal video, where I talked about sort of focusing on making shorter videos because the shorter the video, obviously, the less time it takes to make. But yeah, they do take quite a long time to make. Lesson two is not really a lesson. It's just, I still don't really understand how YouTube works, if I'm being honest. Um, my main example for this is that I just don't quite get why certain videos seem to do so well. For example, for me, I've just got one video that's done very, very well, which is how to make notes like a project manager. And it's not a particularly well-made video. It was shot in a bit of an echoey room. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. The lighting was not very good. I've watched it back quite a few times now and I do fully back all the information I put in it. So I, you know, that was really good. But I just don't understand why that one has done so well. Uh, compared to the other ones. I feel like they're all in a similar vein. So in general, I've really tried to focus on making a really good, catchy, relevant thumbnail. And I've really tried to focus on the first 30 seconds of the video to keep people's attention. But I'm not sure how well that's been working. And it just, there's no correlation, as I've mentioned previously in, in previous videos, there's no correlation really between the amount of effort you put in and the success of the video. I really enjoy brainstorming, I've, I've learnt. Uh, I constantly have all these ideas popping up in my head of videos that I could make. So I've got a, like a huge collection of sort of video ideas that I've come up with. For me, this has been sort of an indicator that I am really quite passionate about this because I'm constantly thinking about it, whether it's in the shower, in a lecture, doing a revision, talking to a friend. I'm constantly in the back of my mind worrying about what sort of things could I talk about, what could I share. I think that's a really positive sign. So scripting or writing, it can be fun and I do really enjoy elements of it, but it's definitely not my most uh, favourite thing. I've mentioned this a few times, but I'm obviously studying engineering and I'm also dyslexic, so any kind of writing-y, spelling, English-y things don't, as you can tell from those words, 
they don't come very well to me. So in order for me to be able to really focus on writing well, I've often had to do it in scenarios where I can really focus on it. For example, when I'm getting the bus places, sometimes I'm on like a bit of a longer bus and I find that the best place to write because I can't escape and do other things. It's probably the thing that I get most easily distracted from. I absolutely love about 90% of editing. And this, for me, is probably the main reason why I'm still going right now. Being able to take a very clunky, nervous looking bloke who doesn't really know how to talk on camera into a vaguely coherent person is very, very deeply satisfying. And slowly I have been learning how to sort of tell stories with my video editing, which I'm still very new at. But I find it so exciting being able to sort of create emotion through you know, the way that I edit a video, whether it's to do with what sort of shots I'm putting on, the music I'm using, what sort of, I don't know, words or texts are coming up. I've found that element probably the most enjoyable out of any of the things. However, because it's literally the most time consuming activity and I think it's the first thing that most YouTubers outsource, there are elements that are just very boring. Uh, for example, just constantly inserting text into all parts of the video and trying to make every element of the video as good as possible and it can just get quite boring at times, but that's that's only about 10% of it, I'd say. Another thing I've learned is that I'm not a massive fan of filming, like I'm doing right now. Um, I love cameras, and I love the sort of image that it produces, and I don't really mind seeing myself on camera, I mean, that's why I'm still doing this. But for me, the process of filming, I do find a little bit tricky, and particularly, I just cannot film in public for the life of me. Like, probably my worst nightmare would be filming in public and talking to a camera. Now I have I have kind of done that before when I did literally my second video. I can't believe I did this for my second video, but I made a video sort of going through a, a trip to Fruit Logistica in Berlin with my company. And I did a little bit of sort of vlog style stuff. But just the idea of bringing up a camera in front of other people and talking to it just terrifies me. So this is kind of why I've always done it in my room. And I think this is an area that I could grow in a lot. And yeah, that's just, my honest opinion. This is a weird one. I absolutely love making thumbnails. I know some people hate it because it makes them feel a bit vain or I know clickbaity. Uh, I don't like clickbait obviously um, but with YouTube you do have to play the game as they say. You do need to make your, your thumbnail as sort of appealing as possible and I love sort of messing around with different graphics and ideas. I love having this sort of creativity to try and draw people's attention in. I've no idea if I'm doing it very well to be honest. I mean as I said, I don't know why people certainly click, click on certain thumbnails and not others, but I've really enjoyed this area. I've learned that I'm addicted to checking channel analytics and growth. This is definitely a negative one really, but I, I do have this issue just wanting to sort of know what the current status is of the channel. Are, are there any videos that have taken off? And quite often the answer is no. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the time it's no. Yes, I, I really don't like this. I'm basically constantly having to check my uh, videos and how well they're doing, because. I mean, the, the reality is I, I love being able to check it, but often nothing's happening and then it makes me feel a bit rubbish. And this is, leads into the next point I've learned is that YouTube Studio can be you know, the best thing on planet Earth when you've got a video doing well, because you can come back and see, oh wow, look how much I've grown. But the entire rest of the time, it is the bane of my existence. I, like it, when I go on it and I just see that, oh, this video's eight, ranked eighth out of 10, or it's ranked 10 out of 10, it's the worst one. It just makes you feel rubbish. Another interesting thing to tell you is that I actually joined sort of like a little community of YouTubers. This is because I was approached um, from like a market research company on behalf of YouTube to help with some projects. I, I'm not actually allowed to talk about because I signed an NDA, but I can tell you that I'm, I'm in a community of YouTubers and, and that's been really helpful because I've been able to sort of bounce ideas off them, uh, learn from more experienced YouTubers and share the sort of pains and frustrations of having a YouTube channel. So next I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about what I found quite difficult about uh, doing this YouTube stuff. Obviously a lot of things have been really good, but some things have been difficult and, I, and I've probably given you a little foretaste of what they are through what I learned. So the first thing that has to be mentioned obviously is negative comments. I really haven't had a lot of these to be honest because I've always been so small that no one's really you know, been that bothered by me. But more recently obviously with channel growth sort of increasing and it reaching more people, I do get a few sort of negative comments and they have been quite, you know, difficult to read sometimes. But as I said, I'm part of this YouTube community and I'm able to share that with them. And they're like, yeah, I completely understand. Um, and giving me some really good advice about it. And actually I quite often find engaging in a fun way is often the best idea, but unless it's like really bad, in which case just ignoring it. But yeah, I mean, I've really not had a lot of experience with that and I'm sure that'll sort of come more in the future, but they still aren't fun to read. That's all, that's all I'll say. Another thing I found difficult is 
um, what I've termed subconsciously changing goals. So obviously I said my goal has always been to make 50 videos and that has always been the goal. But in my in the back of my mind, I've kind of always been like, oh, actually, you know what? <coughs> I'd really like to be monetized. You know, I'm going to aim for you know being monetized, which is, involves reaching a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. And then I'll also be like, oh, you know, I really want to make the next video always better and more viewed than the last one. And these are all, as I've mentioned, they're out of my control and really unattainable. And even though I've set one sort of actual goal, these sort of subconscious goals are still on my mind. And when they're not met, which they're hardly ever met, it makes you feel a bit rubbish. Matt Diavella made a good point in one of his videos about YouTube uh, saying that this job, which isn't a job for me at the moment, is the only kind of job where your entire sort of worth and value can basically be summed up in a number on a screen in the YouTube Studio app. If you're popular, you'll get paid, you'll get views, whatever. If you're unpopular, you won't. And as I mentioned, I still don't really understand how to influence uh, that popularity or influence the algorithm. Another thing that I've found difficult that you might not expect is actually feeling guilty for working on my YouTube channel. As I've said, I'm currently at university doing my master's year, which is obviously a really important year, and I have you know, done a lot of work for it. But whenever I've sort of made some time for making YouTube videos and I spend more than say an hour on it, I start to get this feeling of guilt creeping and of, oh, I should really be doing my coursework, or I should be writing my master's project, I should be doing this. And I feel really guilty for, for making videos, which I really don't like because this is this is my hobby, this is you know my passion that I really want to spend time on. But that just sort of creeps in because you know I'm not getting paid for this at all. Uh, it's just a hobby at the moment. And so it kind of feels tricky when this guilt sort of seems to, to creep in. And I do wonder if I did start to get paid, whether I'd still have that same level of guilt. What I do know is that when money starts to get involved, you probably actually just have way more problems than less problems. Um, but I wonder if that guilt would sort of start to creep away if it became an actual job, who knows. Another thing I found difficult is constantly having this urge to want to do more, uh, you know, with better angles, different kit. Um, I really wanted to start a YouTube course by Matt Diavella called Master YouTube, uh, which is not like outrageously expensive, it's, but it's a couple of hundred pounds and I just, I've not been able to justify it to myself. Um, I am still a student after all. But my sort of issue with this is just, I've constantly wanted to expand and learn new skills and do more, but I only have a finite amount of resources and a finite amount of time. So I, I always find it difficult when I can't sort of keep growing and do more and, and learn how to do cool shots and get different thumbnails and obviously do a course on how to do YouTube better. So yeah, those are some of the things I found a bit difficult about YouTube. So that's a huge splurge of everything that's been going on in my brain. But the question really is, what's next? And I've been thinking about that a lot. So it comes down to a few different decisions for me, which are sort of in different stages. The first decision is, do I carry on with YouTube at all? Because if no, then all the other stuff doesn't really matter. Now the reality is I do think I'm gonna carry on in some kind of way, I'm just not sure what kind of way yet. The second decision is, how often do I want to show up? Which is a bit more of a complicated decision. Recently, I've really enjoyed systematizing my video creating process since the start of 2023. And this has just allowed me to have a system to create one video every week. So do I throw that system out the window and just make videos whenever I feel like it, whether it's often or not? Do I start making videos more often and try and produce two every week? Do I maybe use a similar system, but back it off a little bit and make one every two weeks? These are the things I'm gonna to have to decide. Decision three is a bit more vague, but it's basically just what do I make videos about? As you probably all know, I niched down a bit at the start of this year. Effective work and rest. Learning together how to work and rest well. Talking more about work and rest, which has been really helpful for me to sort of narrow down what I wanted to talk about, but I still wanna take a step back and think about what am I actually talking about? What do I want to talk about in the future? So I have a few other thoughts as well, starting with monetization. Um, in order to be monetized on YouTube, you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And I do have the right number of subscribers to reach monetization, but I don't have enough watch hours. I'm on 3,800-ish at the moment. And it's a funny story with this is that when I was uh, constantly checking to see if I'd reached 1,000, I was getting really close. And I was like, oh great, at this rate, I'll probably you know hit 1,000 subscribers at a certain point and then maybe a couple of days, maybe a few weeks later, I'll hit 4,000 watch hours. It's been more like a month now. And the reason is, and I I don't know why YouTube did this, but as soon as I seemed to hit a thousand subscribers, that one video about notes that was doing really well just suddenly plateaued and sort of my watch time went down a huge amount. And I, 
I was like, why is why has this happened? Because I mean, I have a theory that YouTube were like, you know what, he's getting too close. We need to just step it back a bit so he has to work a bit harder to reach monetization. So, I mean, at this rate, I'll probably be there in about a month's time or so. But if you ask me, you know, would you like to make money from this? Obviously, the answer is going to be yes. I mean, so far, I've been doing it for a whole year, actually having to spend money to do it in order to have some subscriptions and a few bits of kit here and there. Plus, I've had to spend a massive amount of time, which obviously could be used to, you know, earn a living, I suppose, in some, in some ways. So, I've been spending loads just to do this as a hobby. Now, the idea that I'd be able to actually get money back from it does really excite me. Um, so if I could get to that stage, I'd be absolutely ecstatic. But that is something I want to think about though, is how I might monetize my channel if I'm going to carry on. Um, it's not going to be as simple as just ad revenue, it'll be other things as well. So the second area to think about is diversification. I've always heard that it's not good to just keep your audience in one place, particularly not in YouTube, because technically I don't own my audience on YouTube. YouTube can sort of choose to show my videos t to my audience or to other people, but they can easily take that away as well. And what I've learned is that apparently it's quite a good idea to try and shift them over onto a place where you can control it, such as an email newsletter. So in the past couple of months, I've been thinking, oh, should I you know, make a little website? Should I start a newsletter? And I was getting you know, kind of excited about this and, and thinking it'd be a good idea. But I was also thinking to myself that that would stretch myself really thin. And I just wanted to focus on making 50 videos, getting to this goal, which I'm now reaching. And I said to myself that once I reach that goal, I'll then think about maybe the next few steps of diversification, monetizing, and so on. So if you'd be interested in receiving a newsletter that's to do with sort of inspiring you in your work and encouraging you to keep going, then do let me know, because that's probably the type of thing that I'd be looking to create. Another thing for me to think about is gear. I've been really wanting to upgrade because I've been making all my videos on my phone, which has been a uh, challenge in many ways, particularly to the storage on the phone, there's not a lot of storage on there. But also I love kit and I love to be able to sort of fiddle around and learn how to use a good camera. But again, I've sort of had to pull myself back and hold myself back a bit here so that I could focus on getting to this 50 videos. And then at that point I said, right, well, I'll, at that point, allow myself to think about maybe getting some gear if it would be a good idea. The issue with this obviously though is cameras are so expensive and I just don't know how, if I have the money for it really. And interestingly, the only bit of kit I've actually had to buy is this uh, microphone adapter that allows me to plug my microphone into my phone. So that's literally the only piece of kit I've had to buy. I did get a laptop, but I was gonna get one of those anyway because my laptop was dying. Overall, I hope you can see I'm taking this very seriously and I do not want to take what I've built for granted. I'm so uh, grateful for this amazing experience and being able to build this channel has been really awesome. But I also, massively you know value my own time and my life so I didn't want to just hurtle straight into the next thing yeah you know, I wanted to give myself some time and as many of you probably know I'm a Christian so you can certainly bet that I'm going to be praying about this sort of next step and, and what sort of God might want me to do uh, with my time what I can tell you is I'm not going to make any videos for the next two weeks I'm going to use that time that I would have used to make videos to uh, reflect to pray to chat to my friends and family about what the next stage is and then I'll come back in a few weeks time and present you my thoughts and findings. And if you want to go back and look at any of my other videos talking about my YouTube journey, I've got a whole playlist about it, which will be somewhere on the screen here. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video, but that next video could be my last one. It could be one of the next phase, who knows? But I hope you turn up and, and have a look to see what the next phase of this channel is gonna be about. See ya.